Okay, here we are again. We're working on statistics again today. Today we're doing lesson number seven where we're going to take what we learned yesterday about creating box plots and today we're going to analyze them and see what we can learn from them. So look at that cute little box plot. It does look like a cat if you're creative and want to make it look like that. But remember there's their five number summary. The median, the upper quartile, the lower quartile, the upper extreme, and the lower extreme. So our learning target is the same as yesterday, being able to display numerical data on dot plots, histograms, and box plots. Okay, so let's review what five numbers we need to create a box and whiskers plot. So let's go ahead and put those in here. The very first thing, we need the median in there, which is that number right in the middle. So we have to line up our data from least to greatest in order to find that. Then we need the upper quartile, which is this one right here. Let's maybe make that a little bit smaller so it fits in our box. Okay, and then we need the lower quartile, which would go here. That's the middle of those upper and lower sections, above and below the median. And then we need the upper extreme. And we need the lower extreme right here, which are also known as our minimum and maximum. So those are the five different numbers that we need in order to create a box and whiskers plot. Okay, so the first thing we're going to learn today is about finding the inner quartile range. We've already learned how to find the range of our data, which is that uh, maximum minus the minimum. It's how far apart are the highest and lowest numbers. So the inner quartile range is also a range of numbers, but instead of being the range of the entire thing, we're looking at just the range that's inside our box the interquartile range. So we're looking at the range between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So in this particular one, we would do 92 as the upper quartile, 69 as the lower quartile. So we would do 92 minus 69, and that would give us 23. So the inner quartile range is 23. It tells us how far is that middle section spread out. So the bigger the number, the more spread out the data is inside that box. So let's give it a try here. We're going to find the inner quartile range. So we're, again, we're not looking at the extremes. We're looking at the quartiles. We're just looking at what is the range inside this box. So the upper quartile is 26 and the lower quartile is 18. So we would take 26 minus 18 and we would get eight. So the inner quartile range is eight. It's just the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So this asks us to um, find the inner quartile of both classes. So let's look at how they came up with this answer of 14 and nine. So class B, we are going to look at the upper and lower quartile. So we're going to look at this number minus this number. So it would be 87 minus 73. So 87 minus 73 equals 14. So the inner quartile range of class B is 14. So that means that middle 50% were only separated by 14 points or 14%, whatever that data is. Okay, in class A, we're going to use those two numbers right there. So we have 82 is the upper quartile, and we're going to subtract 73 as the lower quartile. So that equals 9 right there. So class B, their scores were far more spread out than class A's. So even though they both represent half of the class inside that box, class A scores were a whole lot closer together than class B. All right, let's look at this, our percent distribution in a box and whiskers plot. The fact that we're separating them into quartiles means that we're separating them into quarters or 25%. So each section of our box and whiskers plot represents 25% of our data. 
So that means within this box right here is half of our data. And then we have the upper quarter and the bottom quarter. So on this box in Whiskers Plot, half the students scored between like 69 and 87. Half the students were in there. Then we had some who scored lower than that and some who scored higher, but most of the students were within that range right there. So let's put this to some use here. The Cedarburg High School Orchestra teacher, Mr. Goodman, asked the students in the violin section how many minutes they practiced each day. This box and whiskers plot shows the results. Okay, so I don't know how many students there were. I simply know this is how the data is spread. Okay, so it asks us what percent of students practice violin for 60 minutes or more each day. So it's asking us here for a percent. So what I know is that each of these sections represents 25% of my data. Okay, so if we want to know what percent of the students practice for 60 or more minutes, that's going to be this right here, 60 or more minutes. So 25% of my students practice the violin for 60 or more minutes each day. Okay, Mrs. Chang noted the final grade for each of her students and the box and whistles plot shows the results. So these are her grades in her English class. What percent of the students earned a grade lower than 50%? So remember that each of these sections represents one fourth or 25% of her class. So we want to know what percent scored lower than 50%. Well, the lower extreme right here is 50%. That means that was the lowest num number anybody scored. So nobody scored lower than 50%. So 0% of her class got less than 50%. Okay, my was planning to start a hair salon and wanted to know how many clients to expect. So she tracked the daily client count at several other hair salons. This box and whiskers plot shows the results. So this is the daily number of clients. Okay, put the video on pause and see if you can find the right answer and then turn it on and check it. So what percent of the salons have between 20 and 24 clients each day? So this represents 25%. This represents 25%. Each section's 25%. So what percent of the salons have between 20 and 24 clients each day? So that would be here. And that is this 25% and that 25%. So 50% of the salons have between 20 and 24 clients each day. All right, a healthcare organization is trying to reduce writing time by patients with appointments. The box and whiskers plot shows the results. I'm having a hard time. Let's do that so we can make sure we see it all. Okay, so the doctor's office wait times in minutes. Okay, so 25% waited there. This is 25%. 25% and 25%. Okay, what is the IQR or the inner quartile range? So remember that the inner quartile range is what's inside the box. So we're looking at that middle 50%. So um, it looks like these go by five. So the upper quartile is 35 and the lower quartile is 15. So 35 minus 15 is 20. So the inner quartile range is 20. What percent of the data is above 15 minutes? So here's 15 minutes right here. So that means all of this data is above 15 minutes. So 25, 50, 75% of patients had to wait more than 15 minutes. What percent of the data is less than the median? Well, the median divides the data in half. So always 50% of the data is above the median and 50% of the data is below the median. And what is the range of the data displayed? So the range is what we've already worked on. It's the high minus the low. So it's gonna be this one minus this one. So 45 minus 10 
is the data, so or the upper extreme and lower extreme, so the range would be 35. Okay, Sandra works at a utility company and is tasked with reaching out to households to help them reduce their energy usage. To this end, she examined bills for households in Oakdale and Wild Grove to see how much they use on a monthly basis. These box and whiskers plots show the results. Okay, so the electricity used per month. All right, so this asks several of the same things that the last one did. So why don't you put the video on pause and see how you can do answering the questions and then check them with mine. Okay, so the inner quartile range of Wild Grove. So uh, let's see, I'm looking at the second one because here's Wild Grove and it looks like the upper quartile um, is at 1,100 and the lower quartile is at 700. So 1,100 minus 700 equals 400. So the inner quartile range is 400. What is the difference in the upper extreme of Oakdale and Wild Grove? All right, so I'm looking at just the upper extreme. So in Oakdale, the upper extreme is right here, it's 1300. And in Wild Grove, the upper extreme is right here, it's 1200. So the difference in those two is 100 kilowatt hours, because that's what we're looking at right here. How much higher is the first quartile of Oakdale than Wild Grove? How much higher is the first quartile of Oakdale so it's at 900 and this one's at 700. So it is 200 kilowatt hours higher than Wild Grove. And what percent of Wild Grove's data is above 1000? So here's 1000, it's the median. So here's 25% right here and another 25% right here. So the median again divides it in half. So 50% is above and 50% is below. So 50% of the data is above 1,000. All right, Matt is running for office and wants to know the amount of income tax paid last year by houses in Lakeside and Princeton. These box and whiskers plots show the results. So this is dollar amounts that are paid in taxes. All right, just taking a quick look at both of these, I can see which city I would probably rather live in, um, probably Princeton, because the amount of taxes people pay is much more uniform and closer together. And in Lakeside, it's super duper spread out. So I guess if you're on the lower end, that's positive, but um, most of them are way on the higher end. So what is the inner quartile range of Lakeside? So inner quartile range is gonna be this, upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So 5,500 minus 3,750. 5,500 minus 3750. And that is equal to the 1750. So the inner quartile range has a difference of about $1,750. So the middle 50% of the people vary about $1,750 in what they pay in taxes. Okay, what percent of the data for Lakeside is between 3750 and 5750? So between 3750 and 5750, which is at the top. So that would be all three of these sections. So 2550, 75% of the people are between that range. All but that lower quartile, that lower 25%. How much greater is the upper extreme of Lakeside than the upper extreme of Princeton? Okay, so Lakeside is 57.50 up here, and at um, Princeton, it's 42.50. So 57.50 minus 42.50, looking at that upper extreme. And it looks like the difference is about $1,500. So uh, people in Lakeside, the highest number of people pay $1,500 more in taxes than the people in Princeton. 
All right, the accompanying box and whiskers plot represents the scores earned on a science test. All right, put this on pause, find the answers, and then come back and check. So the median score. The median is that one right there in the middle. So the median score was 75. What score represents the 25th percentile? So the lowest 25% right there um, is going to be 70. So this number right here represents the 25th percentile, 25, 50, 75, 100. Between which two numbers does half the data lie? So half the data lies between 70 and 85 right here. That's the box. Your box is half the data. If Jennifer scored 85, explain how her grade compares to the rest of the class. So Jennifer would be right here at 85. So it looks like Jennifer scored better than 75% of her classmates because she's in that 75th percentile right there. So I would type right here in terms of percentages that Jennifer scored higher than 75% of her classmates. That's how her grade compares to everybody else. All right, make your own box and whiskers plot here and then answer the questions. So turn off the video and see how you do on your own and then come back and check it. All right, to make my box and whiskers plot, I need to put my data in order from least to greatest. I'm going to do that first. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so there's my numbers. So now I'm going to find my five number summary. So I've got my upper extreme, my lower extreme, and I've got my median, and then I've got my upper quartile and my lower quartile. Okay, so let's see, there's my median, upper quartile, lower quartile. So there's my box right there, and then my whiskers are up here at 72 and down here at 42. All right, so what is the inner quartile range? So that is going to be my upper quartile, which is 68, minus my lower quartile, which is 45. So my inner quartile range would be 23. What percent of the data is below 68? So 68 is my upper quartile, so 25, 50, 75%, three of my sections are below 68. So 75% of my data is below 68. If these numbers represent test scores, how would 68 compare to the rest of the students? So 68, which is that upper quartile, would be better than 75% of the class. Okay, try again and then come back and check your answers. So I'm going to put my data in order from least to greatest. Uh, let's see, 94, 95, and 100. Okay, let me make sure I got them all. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Looks like I did. Okay, there are 12 numbers. That's an even number of data. So that means that my median is going to fall in between two numbers. So 12, half of 12 is 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means my median is going to be halfway. There's 6 on this side and 6 on that side. So that is going to be 79.5. And then my upper extreme is going to be halfway in between there because there's 3 there and 3 there. So halfway between 86 and 94. So the difference between those is 8. So halfway between um, half of 8 is 4. So that means 90. Is going to be halfway in between there and then this is going to be halfway between 68 and 73 so the difference between 68 and 73 is 5 and half of that is 2.5 so 70.5 i'm going to add 2.5 to 68. okay and then my upper extreme and lower extreme are pretty easy to find i'm actually going to make my box and whiskers below here just because i don't have a lot of space so um, 90 and 79.5 and 70.5 that makes my box and then my whiskers are at 100 and down here at 62. Okay what is the inner quartile range? So the inner quartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower so seven or 90 minus 70.5, which would equal 19.5, would be my inner quartile range. 50% of the data is between what two numbers? So I'm looking at half my data is between 62 and 70.5. Nope, that's 25% of my data. 79.5 and 100. Yep, that's my median all the way up to my upper extreme. So 50% of my data lies right there. All right, how does the number 90 compare to the rest of the class? So once again, 90 is at that 75th percentile range. So 90 would be better than 75% of the class. All right, our last problem here. Okay, length of best picture winners in minutes. So movies that have won best picture, here's how long they were. One of them is really, really long at least. Most of them are a little bit closer. Okay, the shortest film to win an Academy Award for Best Picture was Marty, which won the award in 1955. How long was this movie? Okay, so it was the shortest. So it is your lower extreme right there. So it looks like it was 92 minutes long. Okay, number two, is the median time for Best Picture winners greater or less than two hours and by how much? Okay, so the median time is right here. So the median time, it looks like, is 131 minutes. Two hours is 120 minutes. So it is more than two hours. And 131 is 11 minutes more than two hours. So the median time is more than two hours by 11 minutes. One film reviewer looked at this box and whiskers chart and wrote, about 25% of all Best Picture winners are more than 2 hours 41 minutes long. Do you agree? Why or why not? About 25% of all picture Best Picture winners are more than 2 hours and 41 minutes long. Okay, so let's find where 2 hours and 41 minutes are. So 120 is 2 hours. So 10, 2 hours and 10 minutes. 20, 30 41 minutes right here. Okay, and he said about 25% of all Best Picture winners are more than two hours, 41 minutes long. Do you agree? Why or why not? So think about that. Two hours, 41 minutes would be right here. Is that about 25%? I would probably agree with that. It's probably a little bit less than 25%. We know that this whole 
whisker here represents 25%. So it doesn't represent quite that whole whisker, but I would say about that. So I would agree because it lies right there within that upper quartile, which is 25%. Right, Cleon wants to find out what running time is shared by the most best picture winners. Can he use this box and whiskers plot to find the answer? Why or why not? Okay, that's a great question. So he's looking for the mode, which had the most, like what movies had the most time that was the same. Can we find the mode on a box and whiskers plot? And the answer to that is no. All we know is what somebody the high and what the low was we don't actually even know if the median was one of the movie times because it could have been an odd number of movies and so the median was in between two and not even one of the actual running times and the same is true of the upper and lower quartile so the only things that we know for sure are that one of them was 92 minutes long and one of them was 222 minutes long that's all we know we don't know what the actual running time of any of the other ones. So we cannot figure that out from a box and whiskers plot. We're mostly just looking at trends and percentages um, when we do a box and whiskers plot. We can't find the mean and we can't find the mode. We do have the median, although we don't know if that's one of the pieces of data or not. All right, you are ready to analyze box and whiskers plots on your own, on your assignment. So good luck with that today.